Three and One Are One by Ambrose Bierce. In the year 1861, Barr Lassiter, a young man of 22, lived with his parents and an elderly sister near Carthage, Tennessee. The family were in somewhat humble circumstances, subsisting by cultivation of a small and not very fertile plantation. Owning no slaves, they were not rated among the best people of their neighborhood. But they were honest persons of good education fairly well-mannered and as respectable as any family could be if uncredentialed by personal dominion over the sons and daughters of ham the elder lassiter had that severity of manner that so frequently affirms an uncompromising devotion to duty and conceals a warm and affectionate disposition he was of the iron of which martyrs are made but in the heart of the matrix had lurked a nobler metal, fusible at a milder heat, yet never coloring nor softening the hard exterior. By both heredity and environment, something of the man's inflexible character had touched the other members of the family. The Lassiter home, though not devoid of domestic affection, was a veritable citadel of duty, and duty, ah, duty is as cruel as death, when the war came it found in the family as in so many others in the state a divided sentiment the young man was loyal to the union the others savagely hostile this unhappy division begot an unsupportable domestic bitterness and when the offending son and brother left home with an avowed purpose of joining the federal army not a hand was laid in him not a word of farewell was spoken not a good wish followed him out into the world whither he might meet with such spirit as he might whatever fate awaited him making his way to nashville already occupied by the army of general buell he enlisted in the first organization that he found a kentucky regiment of cavalry and in due time passed through all the stages of military evolution from raw recruit to experienced trooper a right good trooper he was too although in his oral narrative from which this tale is made there is no mention of that the fact was learned from his surviving comrades for bart lassiter has answered here to the sergeant whose name is death two years after he had joined it his regiment passed through the region whence he had come the country thereabout had suffered severely from the ravages of war having been occupied alternately and simultaneously by the belligerent forces and the sanguinary struggle had occurred in the immediate vicinity of the lassiter homestead but of this the young trooper was not aware finding himself in camp near his home he felt a natural longing to see his parents and sister hoping that in them as in him the unnatural animosity of the period had been softened by time and separation obtaining a leave of absence he set foot in the late summer afternoon and soon after the rising of the full moon was walking up the gravel path leading to the dwelling in which he had been born soldiers in the war age rapidly and in youth two years are a long time Bar Lassiter felt himself an old man, and had almost expected to find the place in ruin and desolation. Nothing apparently was changed. At the sight of each dear and familiar object, he was profoundly affected. His heart beat audibly. His emotions nearly suffocated him. An ache was in his throat. Unconsciously he quickened his pace until he almost ran his long shadow making grotesque efforts to keep its place beside him the house was unlighted and the door opened as he approached and paused to recover control of himself his father came out and stood bareheaded in the moonlight father cried the young man springing forward with outstretched hand father the elder man looked him sternly in the face stood a moment motionless and without a word withdrew into the house 
bitterly disappointed, humiliated, unexpressibly hurt, and altogether unnerved, the soldier dropped into a rustic seat in deep dejection, supporting his head upon his trembling hand. But he would not have it so. He was too good a soldier to accept repulse as defeat. He rose and entered the house, passing directly to the sitting-room. It was dimly lighted by an uncurtained east window. On a low stool by the hearthside, the only article of furniture in place, sat his mother, staring into the fireplace, strewn with blackened embers and cold ash. He spoke to her, tenderly, interrogatively, and with hesitation, but she neither answered nor moved, nor seemed in any way surprised. True, there had been time for her husband to apprise her of their guilty son's return. He moved nearer, and was about to lay his hand upon her arm, when his sister entered from an adjoining room, looked him full in the face, passed him without a sign of recognition, and left the room by a door that was partly behind him. He had turned his head to watch her, but when she was gone his eyes again sought his mother. She too had left the place. Bar Lassiter strode to the door by which he had entered. The moonlight on the lawn was tremulous, as if the sward were a rippling sea. The trees and their black shadows shook as in a breeze. Blended with its borders, the gravel walk seemed unsteady and insecure to walk on. This young soldier knew the optical illusions produced by tears. He felt them on his cheek, and he saw them sparkle on the breast of his trooper's jacket. He left the house and made his way back to camp. The next day, with no very definite intention, with no dominant feeling that he would rightly have named, he again sought the spot. Within a half a mile of it, he met Bushrod Elbro, a former playfellow and schoolmate, who greeted him warmly. "'I'm going to visit my home,' said the soldier. The other looked at him rather sharply and said nothing. "'I know,' continued Lasseter, "'that my folks have not changed, but—' "'There have been changes,' Albro interrupted. "'Everything changes.' I'll go with you, if you don't mind. We can talk as we go. But Albro did not talk. Instead of a home, they found only fire-blackened foundations of stone, enclosing an area of compact ash pitted by rains. Lassiter's astonishment was extreme. I could not find the right way to tell you, said Albro. In the fight a year ago, your house was burned by a federal shell. And my family, where are they? In heaven, I hope. All were killed by the shell. The end of Three and One are One by Ambrose Bierce